Hello, welcome to the second video of circular motion or second lecture series. Uh, and uh, hey, if you're going to study how and why a stormtrooper rotates this way, all right, let's go. So um, today it's mainly about circular circles, sorry, horizontal circles. What am I talking about? Horizontal circles or any form of flat circles. The third lecture will be on vertical circles. Here I am at a roundabout. In fact, I'm just going to go around and around for now. So you see, as I am turning, I'm forcing the car to turn. The car actually does not want to turn. The car wants to go straight because of Newton's first law. But think about what's holding me towards the center of this circle. Well, let me just turn out so I don't panic those cars behind me. You see, when your car is moving straight and suddenly you turn the wheel, the friction on the road is going to help you turn and this friction is pointing towards the center of the circle you know center of the roundabout <clears throat> that is what we call the centripetal force in this case because that is the force the resultant force that's pointing towards the center of a circular path okay so next time if you ever turn around a corner or i don't know go on a roundabout please don't go too fast because the faster you go a larger centripetal force all right Indeed, if you turn too fast, you might not have enough friction for your centripetal force. Okay, so before we begin, um, I just want to remind you that centripetal force is always a resultant force. And like all resultant force cases or equilibrium, first order of business is to draw and label the forces. So what you see here is what we call a conical pendulum, a pendulum that swings in a circle forming a cone. Okay, later I will swing a bottle for you to see. And uh, in this particular picture, you will find that there is tension in the string parallel to the rope, okay? And there's also weight pulling it downwards like this. And point C is the center of the circle. So we know that the unbalanced net force must be directed towards the center, okay? So I'm going to resolve the tension T into two perpendicular direction. Again, throw back to your AS. This resolution, right? meaning means that I will resolve the T into two components, okay? And let's assume that the angle theta is the angle between the string and the vertical. So this angle will be theta, alternate angles, and this will be T cos theta. And T cos theta will balance off with mg. The unbalanced one directed towards the center is T sine theta. Okay, so step one. Um, because this is a horizontal circle, the upward force and the downward force have to be the same. Right, so from a, for a horizontal circle, I can say that T cos theta will be equal to mg, up is equal to down, and because uh, T sine theta is your unbalanced force, so when you resolve, you have to be smart. Lah. You resolve one component into the center, directed towards the center. So because of this one being unbalanced, we say that this T sine theta provides the centripetal force. Okay. So we will have T sine theta equal to Fc, and T sine theta will be equal to mv square over r. Okay? Where m is the mass of the ball. So I got two equations, equation 1, equation 2. I don't know about you, but whenever I see sine and cos, I have an urge to divide them. Because I like to eat egg. I'm just joking. Because I will get tangent theta. So mv square over r divided by mg. And you can see I can cancel off the m. Leaving myself with tangent theta will be equal to v square over rg. Okay, so now we will have uh, v square over r v square over rg, and uh, generally when you have this kind of uh, expression, right, it's important to note that what all the v and the r is la v would be the speed, linear speed of your particle, and then r would be the radius of the circular path. All right? So the way to solve questions like this, right, is generally, if you are very confused, the first step would be to label all the forces. Like you can see, I have labeled my T and then labeled my Mg. And then the second step would be to identify the net or the unbalanced force and always equate the unbalanced force to centripetal force. Like what I have done here for your sine theta provides centripetal force and sine theta equal to Fc. 
A few observations that you can tell from this e from this equation. Number one, when V increase, theta will increase. Okay? And the whole movement is independent of the mass. So if I put a marble or I put a bowling ball, I should get the same situation. So here you can see, oh my god, it's so weird to see two of me. You can see when the ball is rotating, um, ball, ball, when the ball is rotating fast, the angle is very big. The bottle is lifted higher. If you've been to Genting Highland, you will know lah. Okay. So the and then when it slows down, the angle will decrease. If you have ever set a amusement park right, you would have seen this before. When it's faster, as you can see, I'm rotating it faster now. The bottle will lift up. And if I rotate it slower, the bottle, the angle made with the vertical will actually decrease. All right, that's all. Okay, so let's think about other scenarios where an object performs a horizontal circle as well. Okay, another example of this um, would be, for example, let's say I have a car and then this car is on a bank curve. So if you look at this one, you know, it's like a kind of like race track that uh, certain cyclists will drive on where it's at an angle and you turn this way. Okay, it's a bit different than uh, Miss Ellie's uh, driving around the roundabout because when you drive around the roundabout, the only force that uh, provides centripetal force towards the center of the roundabout is the friction between the car tires and the road. Okay, so if you drive faster and faster, F is equal to mv square over r. The F, the force that you need is greater and greater. So if the friction is no longer enough, you will drift and slide away. Okay, so now um, we will see something slightly different where instead of a car turning in a horizontal circle, let's say this is my car, instead of the car turning this way, the car will turn this way. All right. Okay, so let's try. Let's see. And uh, when the car is turning this way, right, the first thing that we should find is the radius or the center of the rotation. Because the center of rotation will tell us where the direction of the net force is. If we don't know where the direction of the net force is, we cannot for sure tell where the center of that rotation will be. So in this case, right, um, the center of the rotation is here. And you can now just, uh, number one, label the forces which they already have. This is the normal force. And if you remember, again, throw back to your AS, normal have to be 90 degree to the inclined plane. A bank curve is like a curved inclined plane. All right. And since the angle theta is here, when we resolve, this is Fn cos theta, and this one will balance out with your mg. Up and down balance, no? It's like this unbalanced Fn sine sin theta will be your centripetal force. Another variation of uh, this kind of uh, drawing would be, let's say, for example, you have an aeroplane. Okay? So when you have an aeroplane, um, this airplane, right, will have a similar situation where there's a lift. Now, let's say, for example, I'm going to draw the lift of the airplane like this. And again, we assume that the lifting force due to Bernoulli's principle of pressure difference will be 90 degree to the body or the wing of the airplane. Okay, And let's assume that the weight is pointing vertically downwards. So in this particular diagram, right, uh, what you can find is that for this lift of the airplane, let's say we call this L, we are going to resolve L once again, such that there's an unbalanced component that is directed towards the center of the circle. So uh, one will be like this, and the other one will be pointing upwards to balance your mg. But we need to transpose or find where theta exists in the first place. So you can see actually all the diagrams look very similar. You have mg pointing vertically downward, and then you have lifting force or normal force or tension at an angle. Okay, such that it can rotate in a circle. So now, I after I transfer the angle, I find that this one is theta because um, there, here is z ma, so this is theta lo. But this is ninety degree, so this is ninety minus theta lo. So then this is also ninety degree, so this is theta lo. Okay, basic maths. So this will be l cos theta and this will be l sine theta after resolving. So once again, l cos theta and l sine. L cos theta will be equal to mg, and L sine theta is the 
unbalanced force to provide FC. So you can see the plane is rotating this way. So if you have ever seen, let's say the bottle cover is the center of rotation, if the airplane wants to turn, right, it will angle this way. You cannot angle like this, are uh, very weird. Okay. All right, let us revisit the stormtrooper or a motorcycle taking a corner again. This is very similar to the video that uh, you watch featuring Miss Ellie taking around, around, around about. Okay, but this is specifically for the motorcycle. So if you look at the first diagram starting from your left, you will have a vertically upright motorbike. And this motorbike is obviously not rotating anywhere. Okay, and uh, in this case, right, the, not, the forces acting on the tires from the ground would be normal, which is acting vertically upwards, and friction which rotate the wheels. Okay, so because we are drawing a front view of the motorcycle here, we cannot see the direction of friction, which in all likelihood will be pointing uh, backward, okay, or forward, depending on the direction of movement of the motorbike so it's in or out of the plane of that you are looking at right now now if you look at the middle diagram there's a slight leaning or a small lean angle and if you look at the vector diagram drawn below there is a force acting on the tires okay and this force acting on the tires is actually the resultant force between the normal force and your friction okay so this friction is the one that um provides centripetal force so let's say now you turn faster okay and if you want to turn faster and faster especially if you watch all those uh racing shows you will notice that the motorcycles are turning so much that their knees are like a few inches above the ground when you have this large leaning angle as seen in the diagram on your right okay this this allows you to take a sharper turn and it allows you to take those sharp turns quickly okay so because when you lean in that direction there will be a more centripetal forces okay because the force vector will change but it's a bit like when you rotate when i rotated the water bottle faster the angle will increase bearing in mind that the friction is limited so if the friction has already been exceeded then the motorcycle will drift lah. okay it will skid out and then that will be very dangerous for us all right, so now it's time to look at the past year. All right, I'm back. Okay, last time, let's look at an example now. Okay, so here you have a marble. Okay, and uh, you can see that there is, so this itself, right, is a hemisphere. Okay, so this is a hemisphere. And uh, if you read the question, you will put a small ball, like a marble or your, you know, your metal ball bearing inside the bowl, okay? And then it's given a horizontal speed. Maybe I'll find a time to record this for you. Lah. So you put a marble inside a bowl and then you rotate the marble, okay? And I think you know this, lah, the faster the marble rotate, the more it will slide up the wall. Why though? Okay, I'll leave you to think about it. It's related to the leaning angle of the motorbike. You manipulate the angle for a larger force component. So if I manipulate this angle theta, I will get different force component. But anyway, this ball will be uh, in a horizontal part. And the forces acting on the ball is weight W and normal reaction R. Okay, so by resolving the forces into two perpendicular components, show that the resultant force F acting on the ball is given by this expression. W is equal to F tangent theta. So I'm going to now resolve the forces. They are very nice, right? They give you hints. So when you resolve the force, right, you can assume that this is the center of the circle C. So when I draw a front view, this would be the center of the circle C as well. So this will be R sine theta. There's no angle here. And then this is R cos theta. All right. And this would be your resultant force. So if the ball rolls up, say the ball is rotating faster, should go up the wall okay when it goes up the wall this angle will become smaller and when this angle becomes smaller your cos theta will become bigger your net force is bigger so this is able to provide a larger centripetal force necessary for your circular motion okay so right now we can just uh, do the same thing all over again but this is right now for the um 
marble, R sine theta will be equal to W, and R cos theta is your unbalanced resultant force F. Okay, equation 1, equation 2, I'll take 1 divided by 2, and I'll get tangent theta is W over F, and W will be equal to F tangent theta. Alright, there we go, let's continue. State the significance of your resultant force F on the motion of the ball. Well, F is the whole reason why the ball is allowed to rotate in the first place, right? So if the ball cannot push against the wall, if there's no normal force between the ball and the wall, there will be no circular motion. So F is the resultant force necessary to provide centripetal force for circular motion. All right, so it's just a brief one mark explanation. Okay, and right now we can continue. The ball moves at a circular power radius 40 cm. Angle is 28. Calculate the speed of the ball. So I get W is equal to F tangent theta. I also know F is equal to the centripetal force. Um, centripetal force is mv square over r. So I substitute F is this one law. And W is equal to mg. I cancel off the m and I rearrange. I can find my v now. Okay? Okay, so um, at the end of the video, Thanks to some of my students, I noticed that I made a mistake here. Okay, so I rubbed off the mistake and I'm going to correct it now in a different color. Okay, so I think it's just a basic algebra mistake. Maybe I was too tired. It happens to all of us sometimes. So we are asked, I arrived at this equation and uh, while moving the equation, okay, now I'll show you my mistake. So while moving the equation, uh, see, I, uh, this part, right, supposed to be v, v square is equal to rg over tangent theta. So this should be Rg over tangent theta, okay? So I'm going to correct that first. Um, so if it feels a bit slow because this is in real time, I didn't speed it up like as I would normally do. I don't know, guys, which one you prefer? You prefer speed up one or you prefer to watch me slowly rub all these things, change pen color? Tell me, tell me, tell me in the comments, tell me in person. All right, anyway, V square would be Rg over tangent theta. Okay, so I can substitute my V square. Uh, I mean, my R would be 14 cm, 0 0.14. G is 9.81 divided by tangent 28. So I can find my V now. Okay. And also generally, if I write, I'm trying to write fast if I'm being recorded. So it tends to be a bit more messy. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. So where is my friend Casio? The calculator. It's in my bag. Okay, so I think hopefully this won't have mistakes anymore. Remember a square root. So 1.61. Okay, I'm adding this um, at the back of the video because I don't have time to edit again. Okay, so I'll try it Let's see if I can edit this in or it might be at the back of the video. We will see. Anyway, that's all. Bye-bye. All right, so I will see you now in the lec in the next video, uh, lecture three, where we talk about vertical circles. And vertical circles are not that straightforward, okay? So the main idea in this uh, topic would be for you to move in a circle, you need centripetal force. And the centripetal force is always the unbalanced force. So learn, resolve, or look at the center. What is the center of your attention? Hopefully me la, right now, not your phone. But... Look at the center of your circular part. The direct force directed towards that point would be your net force that is unbalanced, which is also your centripetal force. And unbalanced force, as you can see from this question, you are going to equate this to mb square over r. All right? So that's all for this video, and I'll see you in the third one. Take care. Bye-bye.